everybody. In this video, I'm going to go over some more interesting APIs you can use to make projects. If you missed my first video, be sure to check that out. First off is Shodan. So if you've ever wanted to hack your neighbor's smart microwave, this is going to be the API for you. Shodan is essentially Google for any device connected to the internet. So in the age of the internet of things, you can find all sorts of crazy stuff. Some of the more famous examples would be industrial freezers that people could uh, turn off remotely, automated car wash machines that you could turn on and off, entire city transportation networks and traffic lights, and even a French hydroelectric power plant. So this tool is mainly used by cybersecurity professionals or hackers, but you can also, uh, anybody can sign up. The main thing is a search engine you can use like Google but it also has an API for developers where you can get a key and use client libraries for pretty much any language to query this data. Search filters include devices within a certain location, open port numbers, whether the service is using the default password, the name of the service, and much more. So a simple example would be to look for a public database like MySQL and check if it's using the default password. You could then obviously, since it's basically unsecured, do whatever you wanted with that database. Obviously, you're gonna wanna make sure you don't actually do anything unless you're in a country that doesn't extradite people to the United States or you're gonna be taking a trip to prison. So Shodan's a really cool API to play around with, but also be careful before you do anything stupid with it. Up next is radar.io. They provide a bunch of location-based APIs like geofencing, uh, store visit tracking, and trip distance estimates. They also have a beta feature for beacons, which can use the local Bluetooth to be accurate within a few meters for stuff like indoor retail. So if you don't know what any of that is, geofencing is something like where you could set a radius around a certain area. And if somebody with your app enters or exit, uh, radar will then send you a notification and you can take an action based on that. You can probably think of a bunch of different apps that use stuff like this. What Radar does is make it, they make it very easy and cheap to implement that compared to having to build everything from scratch. The location API lets you know when a user visits certain places. Um, they have a list of thousands of different businesses that you can track. Um, it can be really useful, but it also can be really creepy if you used it wrong. Like imagine if you're using an app and all of a sudden you get a notification from it saying that we know you just visited a McDonald's. That would be uh, not good. So it can be used for a lot of good stuff, but if you're not careful, it's going to come off pretty creepy. Some obvious use cases would be stuff like real-time position tracking. So if you've ever used like a delivery app of some sort, you can see in real time where your um, driver is located or whatever. In this case, Radar, you can implement that with just a few lines of code. You can also get directions to a location as long as an estimate like Google Maps. And you can also modify based on the location the user's at. So if you're like Walmart or something and you detect that a user is currently in your store, you might want to show them something different compared to if they're outside your store and shopping online. I have some good ideas and project outlines for most of these APIs, but in this video, I just kind of want to stay focused on the APIs themselves. So I'll be making a video probably next week or in a few days where I give out specific project ideas for each of these APIs. So if you're interested in that, you're looking for some inspiration for a side project or a business idea, be sure to subscribe. Webhose is an API with a ton of different use cases. What they do is essentially scrape the entire web, collect that content, and then organize it to make it easy to search using a bunch of different search filters. A lot of major companies use Webhose behind the scene to collect data. So you have social media companies like Hootsuite and Mention, and then you also have IBM who also uses this. So the type of filters you can use to sort through the data are the time the web page was created, a specific domain, domain name like Amazon, for example, specific industries, um, keywords on a page, the number of shares on Facebook, Twitter, or other social media companies, or the amount of traffic to that specific domain. So for example, you could 
look for the most popular articles on a certain topic written within the last month based on social media shares. You could also track um, who is mentioning your name of either yourself or your business and which websites. And then you could filter those based on, so you only want to look at the biggest websites and ignore maybe any small blogs. So the obvious use case for this is stuff like customer service. You can find quickly maybe where your name is being mentioned and you can help somebody out. Like if somebody on Reddit, for example, is trashing your company, you want to know about that and be able to respond. So you can use Webhost to find those places. You can also do uh, public relations stuff, once again, where you want to know where you're being mentioned. And you can do stuff like related to search engine optimization as well. People Data Labs is a pretty creepy company. They keep tons of profiles and data on people. Regardless, it's used by IBM, PayPal, Stripe, Home Depot, and a bunch of other huge companies. When you sign up, you get 1,000 free queries per month. And what they do is provide information on person based on um, a small amount of information that you provide, and it's called enriching the data. So let's say somebody signs up to your app with just an email address. You can send that email address to people data labs, and they can um, most of the time pull stuff like social media profiles, the company they work for, what industry, their job title, potentially what skills they have, experience, and education. So in theory, um, the good way to use it without being a creep is that you could do something like when somebody signs up for a free trial you, with just their email, you can then use something like People Data Labs to get more information and you can find out whether they're actually a good lead. So if somebody has a big time job title at a huge company, that's something you'd want to prioritize contacting and you could send their information to a sales rep and they could call them right away. Uh, another better idea that's not as creepy is that based on the user's skills, you could um, put more emphasis on certain features of your application. So if you know somebody who signed up for your app as like a software developer, maybe you want to emphasize the API for your app. If somebody's just like a non-technical person, then you're going to focus on other features. So in theory, you can use this for good by um, helping to make your app more user-friendly but it can also be used for some really creepy stuff. So now we have Crawlera. I see a lot of tutorials out there for making scrapers and bots, but they're never gonna work long in the real world without getting blocked by any serious website. Uh, we talked about web hose earlier. What Crawlera would do is make it possible to build your own version of that. It works by automatically proxying your traffic through a large number of IP addresses and hiding the fact that your app is actually a bot and not a real person. So you just send, you connect to Crawlera, send your request through it, and then they do the rest. Um, instead of having to manage a bunch of different proxies and stuff like that yourself, they kind of abstract away all that complexity. And for examples of what you could do with it, you could make an Amazon price tracker bot or some sort of Google SEO rank tracker for your website. The SpaceX API is pretty simple compared to all these other ones, but I still think it's kind of cool. You can use it for a simple front-end project or dashboard or something like that. Uh, pretty basic, but you have access to um, all the information about SpaceX's launches, their rockets, the engines, the crew of each mission, and a bunch more. So uh, that's just something you can kind of get creative with. You have a bunch of data you can query and then display it however you want. Segment is a company that's used for connecting data sources. Um, it's very popular with startups and even bigger companies now. Some of their customers are DigitalOcean, Google, Reuters, and a bunch more. Their free tier lets you track up to 1,000 users on your site and connect to data sources. And you can then use those data sources and just send it to up to 300, or they have access to 300 different integrations. A big problem for companies and why they use Segment is that they have all this data kind of siloed off in different places and it can't be accessed. So Segment makes it much easier to connect those and then you can run analytics, make predictions based on that. And in theory, um, 
you can improve your company by using that data. So that's it for this video. Like I said earlier, if you're interested on some more in-depth ideas and project outlines for how you can use these APIs, be sure to hit subscribe. I'll be putting out that video probably in the next couple days. If you think I forgot some cool APIs, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. There's a ton of awesome companies out there, so it's easy to miss some. And maybe I'll put them in a future video. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks.